In this episode, I'm going to cover the Windows Flutter install part one of three. I'm going to start off by going and cloning the git repo for Flutter. Then I'll set the path to the Flutter commands. And then I'll run the Flutter doctor command at the end. So to get started, I'm going to go to the Flutter's guide, Flutter guide for Windows, and I'm going to skip the system requirements and let you discover that for yourself. What I want to do is copy the git clone command by doing a control C on git clone. And then I'm going to go to the terminal by typing in CMD to Cortana and loading up command prompt. A terminal would be for Mac. So once I've got the command prompt open, I'm going to change directory into my git directory. This is where I like to store all my git repositories. Once I'm in the git directory, I'm going to go control V and paste in the git clone command for Flutter. So Flutter will now clone to my local hard drive in the git directory. Now that the git directory is cloned, what I want to do is change into the directory where the binaries are at. So I'm going to go cd to flutter, that's the what I just cloned, and then I'm going to go into the bin directory. And this will give me the directory where the binaries are. So I'm going to control C, and I'll show you why in a moment. I'm going to go back to the guide, and this says update your path. I need to update the system environmental path that says, okay, the commands are located in this directory and I can use them anywhere in my command prompt. So I'm going to go to the control panel and change the environmental variables. Well, with Windows 10, there's a quick and easy way to get there, and that's by asking Cortana to bring up the environmental variables shortcut. So I typed in ENVIR and it gives me the best match and that says edit the system environmental variables. Exactly what I want. So I'm going to select that. Once the dialog opens, I'm going to go to the bottom and select the environmental variables button. And then I'm going to aim for the path and select edit. And this shows it in a list format. This is new in Windows 10. It's very easy to edit. So I'm going to select on new and go control V. So there's my bin, but I don't need that greater than symbol. So I'm going to remove that and click on enter. Well, if you want the old school format, select on edit text, but that'll erase my format. So I'm not going to show you that. So I'm going to select OK, and then I'll go back to edit. And then I'm going to show edit text. And if you go to the end, the colon C users, basically the flutter path is added or appended to the, the variable path. OK, so I'm going to select OK. Select OK and go back to the terminal or command prompt. Once I'm in the command prompt, I need to restart the session so it has an updated path command variable ready to go. So I'm going to exit and go back to Cortana, type in CMD. It loads up the command prompt. Once I'm back in the session, I'm going to type in Flutter Doctor. You could type in Flutter for the first time and it'll do the same thing, but I'm going to type in Flutter Doctor and what that will do is update the Flutter repository and download the Dart SDK for the first time. So let me run Flutter Doctor by hitting enter. It's checking for the Dart SDK and this will take a moment longer to download SDK. This is updated less frequently and you only have to download the SDK now and then. The first time that this is run, it will go through a few more steps and download a few more things than it normally does. Okay, so the Flutter Doctor was the last piece of this execution, and you can see the checkboxes for the completed sections. And I've got a few to, to do still, and I'll cover this in the next two videos, part two and part three. So one more time, I'm gonna run the Flutter Doctor, and this will be more like the norm, normal running. So this is great command to run anytime you're having issues. So I've run it again and it completes very quickly and shows me all the completed sections. I've still got to install the Android tool chain, the Android Studio, but I don't have any connected devices. This is updated dynamically depending on if I have an AVD Android virtual device running or an iOS simulator running. So this concludes this episode for today. Thanks for watching. Follow me for more tips and tricks on Flutter and I'll catch you later.